All right, Jonathan is at the hardware store currently trying to get stained so that we can finish the ceiling. The legendary Goat Barn Container Project is something new for us. It's been dreamed up by our daughter Adelaide, and it's being funded by you. We're converting a shipping container into a full-fledged goat barn with feed storage and a milking room, and we've been racing against the clock to finish before the kids are born. So far, we've had the container delivered, refenced our property around it, cut out and installed multiple windows and doors, framed the inside, ran electrical, added spray foam insulation, built the kidding stalls, learned how to make field fencing, welcomed all seven baby goats into the world, and moved them into the container. Last time, we started remodeling the milking room, and today, we're hoping to put the finishing touches on it. Had only a tiny can, so um, we'll kind of have to make the run to the hardware store tomorrow, which they usually have this stain in stock, so be able to finish it tomorrow. But it is looking really good. I like it a lot. It's looking like a real room. Yeah. You want to see what it looks like with the light on? Yeah. Let's see. Because we got dark around that one, so. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to look really nice. <laughs> it looks very warm and like cozy. Yeah. I like it. All right, Jonathan is at the hardware store currently trying to get stained so that we can finish the ceiling. I've gone ahead and taped off the room and we are ready for paint. So as soon as he gets back, I'll finish the ceiling and we'll go ahead and start trimming out and putting the primer on the walls. And by the end of the day, it should look completely different. friends while Ashley is working on painting and staining the inside of that milk room I've got some work I need to do uh, on the outside or the north side of the container here we had a pretty successful power boot up on the off-grid power system yesterday it's still running but it's technically not grounded um, we have run the grounding wire combined all the grounds inside on all the equipment in there it's running out the bottom here but we also have a grounding wire that is running from the combiner box that the solar panels are going to be connected to. And also we need to ground the container because it's a big metal building and it's raised up off the ground. So it's not actually grounded very well. Um, so we're going to be adding a lug and sort of combining all of those grounds into a single uh, ground rod that goes down. Now you probably remember that we got hit by lightning a couple of years ago, took out a good chunk of our main solar power system. And a lot of that had to do with grounding issues because our soil here is so sandy. It doesn't retain or hold water very well. We've got sand 12 feet down. And so most of the sort of traditional um, grounding recommendations that you get of you know having a single six foot or eight foot copper ground rod are not enough here. On the main system, we opted to add more ground rods. So now we have three, but in doing more research, I also came across a thing called a UFER ground or a UFER ground. I don't know how you say it. So what we're gonna be doing is creating our own little mini version of a UFER. We got a 20 foot trench we got to dig out just about four inches deep. Uh, we're going to run a four gauge copper wire in it and pour concrete in that and basically create a more conductive chunk of material in our native soil. Also you can see marked out we're going to have to pour a little pad for the mini split to go on. Figure we might as well do that while we're doing concrete work over here. So it's got a little bit of work to do over here digging, sort of prepping this area and hopefully we can get to pouring all this concrete later today. Twenty foot trench is dug. Um, I'm gonna throw in an eight foot ground rod at the beginning. Maybe at the end I have two, uh, but they're gonna go down in and then that concrete is gonna kind of go wrap around it at the very end. I was able to push it down through the AV mix, but then I hit the soil underneath and it stopped. So I'm gonna get the sledgehammer, make it work. <laughs> So 
So while I don't technically need another ground rod at the end of the oofer, um, I am thinking a little bit ahead because the solar panel mounting rack that we're going to put on the awning will have its own grounding lug and a cable that needs to connect to this. This one's actually closer to this edge, so I'm going to just go ahead, because I already had an extra one, I'm going to throw it in here and now we can come around this side and connect to it from both ends. All right, so the next step, um, we're gonna be grounding the container. Um, found this, so that means we're going to use a bolt. I gotta clean this off because we don't want any paint or rust or anything on there. We want this to have a nice solid uh, metal connection. So I'm gonna use this part right here so we don't have to drill through the container. So we're gonna clean it and drill it and bolt it down. And then we'll connect our grounding cable. I think I'm just gonna run it through here and tighten it down and then run it to the actual rod so we have less of a broken connection. Took a full minute. One whole minute. Okay. One there. hole. One hole. One hole. Oh. Copper wire is gonna run right through it. And then it's gonna connect down there to the ground rod. But I don't have a socket set or screwdriver. So I'll do this. So I'll be back. Lock it. Now when lightning strikes it, it will go straight back up into the air. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I mean. You need to have concrete under it and then concrete over it, kind of like rebar. So you take that end and I'll give you this. It's like Oh no! Crap. I know. So you just need comfort. to move this. I'm gonna have to move a grounding thing. Yeah. Dang it. So you have to pull it eight feet out of the ground. <laughs> yeah. Still move it, but it will be in a minute. We made a mistake. Ground rod's a little too close or too far away. So Jet's gonna attempt to pull it out. Okay, Exceliber style. Do I get just one? <laughs> <laughs> He's king! Look oh, at no, him! Uh oh. <laughs> He's not king! Hurt at all. And the king. And we that do. is why our soil sucks for conductivity. <laughs> Connectivity. <laughs> no! <laughs> we're not talking <laughs> internet. You need like a handle on the top, <laughs> a sword handle. I have an idea that's probably more effective than that. What? Could just hold it from up high and I could just slide down it like a fire pit. <laughs> <laughs> Is it working? No. <laughs> Is it working? Is it working? <laughs> Is it working? It's just your instincts. <laughs> it's entertainment for us. It's not even moving, is it? One, not two or three. This real life, baby, don't make believe. I just make it look easy like ABC. I keep my cool under pressure like a boss. I'm all in, it don't matter what it costs. All I do is win and a good from the top. First try. It's because how do I measure? She knows how to measure. She learned it from her dad. <laughs> okay, we gotta move all this stuff out of the way, give ourselves room, and start mixing some concrete. You're in the way. Yes. Come here, Cloud. Cloud. We should ah. give him a middle name. Cloud Nimbulus Longnecker. <laughs> We're going to get a nice layer down before we put our mesh in. Like a metal glove. Angela did really good on that. Good job, Ally. Good job, Ally. No, I'm 
do a knot. To make it level? No, to get the air bubbles out. That's what I said, to get the air bubbles out. Because <laughs> this is just such an important cement it's very, pad. It's the most important pad I've ever learned. Holding so a big box. I didn't even shake it. Oh my gosh. Mom, uh, what does APL stand for? Ashley Peck Long Necker. That's my company. My side business. This okay. happens to be your initials. Did uh -huh. you not notice that? No, I did not. But you never answered my question. Truthfully. I did answer This is not your company. If this was your company, we wouldn't have to build our house. <laughs> what do you think it stands for, Dad? Advanced People Lift. No. Apple. Apple. American people lift. Looks like we're gonna need approximately two and a half bags. Half. Okay. Mom, you do you do know why you're doing that? Because it's the bubbles. To level it? No. It's the bubble. It's the de debubble it. Hey, Jax. Debubbles. Time has come. The primer has had enough time to dry, so it is time to get into this. Adelaide has chosen a color called Wet Cement. This is for the walls. The cabinets are going to be a different color. It's going to look really cool. But Jonathan's finishing up in here so that I can work on painting the final coat of paint on these walls. It's going to be beautiful. It's the end of the day. We have two coats on the walls. We'll come back in the morning and see how good it looks. If I need to do any more touch-ups, then we can move to cabinets and trim work. That's why I didn't go all the way to the ceiling. We're going to be putting in trim. I need to build a couple other fun surprises. We'll see you tomorrow. morning. I love the paint color. It does look like wet cement, which is what it's named. So today we're doing the cabinets and hopefully finishing up the paint in this room. So let's get started. I have a beautiful color for you. Let's check it out. I got ahead of myself. Before we check out the color, let's go ahead. We need to take these doors off the hinges so it just makes it a lot easier to paint. And then I'll show you the color. That took way longer than it should have. So now it's time to open the paint and show you. The color is called Blue Ridge Fur. All right, you ready for this? I mean, the cabinets are gonna look good. Shouldn't take me too long. I'm hoping to get this done today, and then I've already stained some trim for the top of the wall and ceiling area. And my goal today is to finish this painting. So I'm gonna paint the cabinets, put the trim in, get some beautiful shots, get this countertop installed again. <sighs> Let's just, we gotta keep going, okay? No more talking.
Did you see what I did? Hey, That's nice. what the trim is going to look like and everywhere in here eventually. I don't think I have enough to finish it today, but I am going to get started. But for now, we need to cut a hole in the back of this cabinet because we have an outlet down here that we need to be accessible for the water pump that is going to be in this cabinet. Also, the water line in and the sink yeah. drain out. Okay. <laughs> well, I wasn't counting on cutting all those. Today. We just need to cut a big hole in the back for all of it. All right, there's three things that need to happen in the back of this cabinet. Right here will be where this outlet is, and then we'll have a uh, drain right here for the sink that goes outside. And then this would be where the water inlet comes in. So I'm just going to cut out the square and then we'll have plenty of room to work with. And I guess the other thing we got to do is we'll have to drill a hole over on yeah. the side here for that yep. water line to come through. Yep. So that line needs to set like right on the edge. Okay. That gap is gonna get fixed, and there'll be a toe kick that's painted the same color as the cabinets there. One thing at a time. All right, so we got our countertop out here. While it's not installed, we're gonna go ahead and uh, get the sink cut and put in, and that way when we take it over, we don't have to make a huge mess cutting it out over inside the cabinet. So, hey, you're measuring. I hate it. <laughs> So much. I think you're doing great. Maybe I should just eyeball it. I could probably cut a straight line. <laughs> Question is. Will it fit? Fit in it? Yeah, it's right, right where it needs to be. It's like we planned it. Nice. That was a tight fit. Yeah, I'm not, I, it's not moving, so I'm not, it's fine. The only problem is our countertop is deeper than the clips for the sink allow, so we can't put the sink in. You gotta find some weird clips somewhere. Yeah. All right, we're working on trim. Jonathan's taking that conduit down so I can put trim up behind it and make it look nice. Although, you're still gonna see gray conduit. I thought you were gonna paint it. No, it's too much trouble. So anyway, we're gonna get that done and then we just have a few more pieces of trim to put up and we will be done with trim, done with paint, other than touch-ups from putting the countertop in. But we're getting close, closer and closer. And then Jonathan needs to get the mini split back up. How's that gonna work? This. Oh, you better fit. Just go ahead and nail it in. Thank you. How are you going to do this one, babe? Every little thing is like a little puzzle. You just got to figure out how to put it together. Can you lift that side up? You're going to have to get it above. Oh, my God. Oh, hi. She can't reach it. Can you help? The height problem. Shh, 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 shh. It's not. I swear I measured this. Sometimes, Make it happen, babe. Sometimes you just have to force things to work, you know? Just hold on. I'm you. almost there. Mm. So close. Just a little more hammering. Look at you making it happen. I told you. I know I measured. <laughs> You figured out a solution for the sink? YouTube to the rescue. I went to go order bigger clips for our big butcher block countertop and ran across a video. I don't even remember who it was from. He's like, hey, there's three ways you can fix this. You can order new ones, which is what I was going to do. He's like, or you can bend them. And I was like, 
hey, so I bent them, and I think it'll work. What was the third way? Um, the third one is to router out where each one goes oh, so yeah. that it wouldn't be a stick. One we don't day, have one of those. One day we need to get a router before yeah. the house cabinet stuff. Yeah, for sure. Because I'm going to be building cabinets. Okay. Well, yeah, but I think I think we can put it in because I did a few tests, and it looks like it'll be all right. So that would be nice to have the sink in. We'll go ahead and drop the, the faucet. We'll just kind of set it in place. Obviously, we're not hooking anything up yet because we don't have water or plumbing yet. But. Okay, but one thing we need to do is sand where we had the caulking on there first. Yeah. And then Get it re up. redo it. Yeah. Okay, one, two, break. I don't know what's with this, babe. It said it was clear. It's definitely not clear. Does that look clear? Maybe it dries clear. Mm. Always the last one. 